Um, a, an email that I got recently from Tracy, she wanted to know how to quilt fabric to use for a bag, and I've gotten this question in the past, um, and I certainly when I first started writing patterns, I didn't make notes of this in the patterns, but more recent patterns I, I sure have. <coughs> Excuse me. When you're quilting fabric for a bag, you do want to cut your fabric and your interfacing larger than what your finished pieces will be to account for shrinkage. I'll talk about it in the video, but um, I have a demonstration video to share with you on how I quilted fabric to interfacing. In this demonstration, I used uh, sort of a diamond uh, scheme for the quilting, but you can use any design that you'd like for your machine quilting, um, whether it's stippling or free motion quilting, if you're quilting things like flowers or feathers into your fabric, whatever your design is, um, but I felt like the diamond design was certainly an easy place to get started. So enjoy the demonstration. They need to be cut approximately one inch larger on all edges in preparation for the quilting. So here's one of my main panels that I cut out from exterior fabric and foam interfacing. And as you can see, it's cut approximately one inch larger than the template. And the reason that we need to do that is because when you quilt or a machine quilt, the fabric and the interfacing tends to shrink down. So we wanna cover ourselves for any shrinkage. So that's why we're cutting it about one inch larger and we'll be cutting down to the proper size after the quilting. Okay, so let's get into the quilting right away. And if you decide to skip the quilting, that's no problem. If that's the case, you'll, you'll cut according to the pattern templates and I'll tell you how to attach the fabric and the interfacing a little bit later on. But let's start with the quilting. For my pouch, I used um, lines on a 45 degree angle. Um, let me show you what the lines look like. So here's a piece that I already quilted and as you can see these are the lines on the 45 degree angle and I used my sewing machine and a walking foot. You could use your regular foot as well but I just thought my walking foot gave me a little bit of extra extra help there. Okay so I'm going to start off with my ruler. There's a marking on the ruler for 45 degree angle and it's marked with the 45. So I'm going to use these two lines over here to start off with my my first lines. I'm using the Clover Chaco. You can use other fabric markers or tools. Just make sure that they are removable after the fabric is quilted. I'm going to space my lines one inch apart. So I've drawn a couple as you can see they're one inch apart and I'm only going to draw lines through approximately the middle. So I like to machine quilt from the middle outward. And the reason that I do that is if you machine quilt from the side or corner in toward the center, once you reach the center you might have a bit of a fabric pucker there, but if you start quilting from the center outward, if there's any extra fabric it'll just be pushed back um, while you're doing your quilting. If your fabric is, um, if your foam interfacing is fusible, you might want to fuse the fabric to the foam before you do the quilting. Mine's a sew-in and I actually prefer having the sew-in as opposed to the fusible. So I'm just going to hold my fabric in place. Um, you can use some wonder clips as well, whatever you're comfortable with doing. Okay, so I've got my lines drawn through the center. So I'm going to start machine quilting using my walking foot, starting with this line and working my way outward. Okay, so I've got the walking foot on my machine. If you prefer to use your regular sewing machine foot for the machine quilting, that's fine too. I've also increased my stitch length to make the stitches look nicer. So my stitch length is set to three and a half millimeters and you can adjust it to your liking if you prefer.
And I'm just going to continue sewing through all the lines till I complete this half of the pouch. Okay, so now that this half is quilted, I'm going to draw lines and quilt the other half. So it's going to be the same method as you did with the first half. You'll just draw the lines. So continue drawing the lines to the opposite corner, machine quilt it, and I'll meet you back here and show you how to draw the lines in the opposite direction, again at a 45 degree angle. Okay, now we're going to draw the opposing lines and machine quilt it just as before. So I'm going to take my ruler again, find that 45 degree angle on the ruler, and start drawing the lines. Again, I'm going to be quilting from the inside out. Okay, I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine, leave the walking foot on, and sew starting from this line and work my way outward. And I'm going to continue on with the remaining lines, continuing to work my way outward. Okay, so let's finish up this other half. Again, draw the lines one inch apart. And I feel like the quilting on this project in particular looks really nice because the fabric machine quilted to the foam interfacing looks really nice and poofy. Um, and if you've never done any machine quilting, this is a really easy straight line design to try out if you've never done any machine quilting before, and especially on a smaller project. It goes by relatively quickly compared to a quilt. Okay, so I'm going to finish quilting this remaining half, and then I'll come back and show you what the finished piece looks like and then how to trim it down to size. Okay, so here's the completed piece. You'll repeat the same process to complete a second exterior fabric attached to foam interfacing and also for the side panel. So again, make sure you cut everything about one inch larger on all sides before you quilt it to account for the machine quilting shrinkage. And then after you've got all of the pieces quilted, I'm going to use the pieces of lining fabric that I cut from the main panel to use as a template to cut out my pieces to size. So you can either draw around your fabric piece or if you're more comfortable you can use that paper pattern piece or you can just straight up cut it. So I'm just going to cut mine out just so it goes by a little quicker. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece over to the sewing machine, the quilted piece, and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around just to seal the edges because some of these edges aren't tacked down really tightly. And even if you did not machine quilt your pieces, this is the method that you'll use to attach the fabric to the foam interfacing if you're using a sew-in foam and if you're using a fusible foam, just go ahead and fuse it in place. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and machine baste it using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I switched out to re my regular sewing machine foot so you won't need the walking foot anymore for now. And I also lengthened my stitch length to four millimeters just because this is a basting stitch and it, it goes by a little bit quicker if you do that.
Okay, so I cut both of my exterior main panels down to size, and I also cut down to size the exterior side panel. So that should be cut according to the measurements in your cutting instructions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration on how to quilt your fabric to the interfacing when using it to make a bag. Danny alerted me that there were a few questions coming through the feed while that video was playing, so I, wanted, I wrote them down and I wanted to answer them. Um, one of the questions was, is a walking foot necessary for quilting your fabric to the interfacing? Um, you can do it with your regular foot. However, I find it easier to use a walking foot for quilting the fabric to the interfacing because it's easier to get even looking stitches. Um, normally on your sewing machine, your feed dog is what helps feed the fabric so that it goes through the machine. When you're using the walking foot, it feeds also from the top because the walking foot is feeding it through the machine as well at the same time that the feed dogs are. Um, another question was, do I need to adjust my presser foot for using the walking foot uh, for the quilting? I usually do take a look at the presser foot pressure while I'm sewing, uh, depending on what, with what fabric that I'm using because if the presser pressure is is set too low sometimes the feed dogs will leave tracks on uh, the underside of the fabric so I always pay attention to that. Um, another question was um, if fusible foam would be better for something like this when you're machine quilting. I usually use sewn foam. I like using by any soft and stable. I know everyone has their own personal preferences. I like using the sewn foam rather than the fusible because sometimes uh, when you're turning a bag right side out through the opening in the lining when you finish the bag Sometimes that fusible foam will leave little ripples or dimples in the finished bag that are um, Difficult to iron smooth again And so that's why I like using the sewing foam and then the fourth question that we noticed Come through the feed while that video was playing was uh, what project was shown in that video demonstration in that particular demonstration I was showing uh, the filigree double zip pouches, which I've linked to in the description if you're interested in seeing that completed project. Um, but you can do machine quilting for just about any project. Um, I, I do personally like the look, I just don't use it often because um, usually I feel like I'm focusing on large scale prints and uh, I feel like the quilting is better shown off in uh, something that's a little bit more uh, monochromatic or has a bit of a solid look, such as in the demonstration when I use that. Um, solid yellow canvas fabric. Okay, I think uh, so I have a question for you um, Have you made a quilted bag before either a quilted bag or a quilted pouch? Let me know in in the comments either on Facebook or YouTube I saw some people were already commenting while the video was playing that they have made quilted bags in the past um, I think it would be fun in future to have some sort of uh, quilted bag or pouch challenge so I'm, I'm gonna keep that in mind for uh, future challenge sometime this year.